everyone, welcome to another Animation Friday, and today I thought it would be interesting to discuss something that's a little bit more general and uh, not as specific, uh, and that is love uh, within animation, or really the concept of love within animation. Now, the interesting thing about animation is usually love is probably a lot of the times kind of at the center of the story um, and it's showcased in various forms from family to romance to um, friendship you know there's a lot of different kinds of love that they make sort of a part of um, animation and uh, I think that's something that's just very uh, interesting and something that I think uh, is really something that has um, been a part of animation since the beginning and continues to be a very focal uh, point to uh, thematic elements within animated films. Um, you could probably say television shows as well, although I think television shows are comedy as opposed to... Um, being rather serious um, or displaying any kinds of um, again they, they do have within television certain uh, elements of love but again I don't think it's as heavily focused on as the films uh, that are animated uh, do focus on it um, it's just not as heavily influenced um, largely I think it's more within animated films but you could say it's really is still a, a huge part of animation. Um, either either medium, um, but I think more so film. Um, at least when you compare, um, at least when you compare it over time, um, television uh, became a little bit more about generating comedy, shock value, all that kind of stuff, and. Uh, animated film sort of stayed grounded in what was traditionally part of a lot of animated films, uh, which involves the, the concept of love and having a more maybe serious tone with maybe some comedy thrown here and there. Um, uh, I think um, that the reason why love plays such a pivotal role in a lot of animated films in particular um, as well as within shorts and some forms of television uh, is the fact that children I think identify with that emotion a lot uh, because um, in particular children require that kind of attention and they require that kind of um, level of uh, intimacy, I think, and I think love provides that kind of, um, that kind of, a uh, emotional sort of gratification for children that they're not alone and that they, they have a sense of security and so on and so forth. And they feel like that somebody actually genuinely cares about them. Um, or, and also it's not just the relationships that children ultimately want for themselves but also um, the also what they probably want for others uh, because the more other people are loved there's therefore more happiness and then that resonates onto the children and that makes the children happy that the people that are around them are happy and loved and cared for as well so it's it, it kind of, I think, is that's why it's such a huge, um, that, that's why love is such a huge expression uh, when it comes to animation. Uh, it's just, it's just a huge focal point in a lot of children's development uh, and plays a significant role in the way they ultimately end up perceiving the world when they grow older. So I think that's why it has been such, uh, it's been so vocal and so re-emphasized and done in different capacities in different ways. Um, 
And uh, for example, there's some other things too that some people might feel is for some reason, I don't want to say they don't feel it's maybe inappropriate, but they just don't understand why they're showcasing it to children. Um, and I think largely that's the romantic love. Like, uh, for some reason, I think some people don't understand why children are drawn to this in particular. Um, but I think I definitely have a good explanation for that. Um, romance, as you probably know, again, putting the, um, putting the homosexual couples aside here, um, children are primarily, um, are primarily created, well, really, I, I guess you could say really still primary, primarily created and primarily influenced by a male and female dynamic. Now, it's not to say that homosexual couples aren't incapable of expressing that same kind of level of love as maybe a heterosexual couple. Um, but if we just talk romance in general um, and leave behind the genders here, um, largely speaking, um, the reason why I think children in particular um, gravitate towards romance, in particular uh, younger girls, is because they seek that kind of stability. Um, and they like having that kind of family unit and family dynamic. Um, and again, romance sort of provides that dynamic. Um, when, you know, your parents are getting along, the more likely the children are going to get along with the parents and the more likely, you know, things will, will be good and prosperous. And that's sort of the, I think, idea as to why children gravitate to that kind of, uh, that kind of, uh, uh, of a, of a relationship. Not because it's, it's something that applies to them per se, but it applies to their surroundings, that they're in a peaceful and loving environment where everybody gets along. Um, so I think that's why this, this, uh, this particular repetition that you see of romance is, shows you how influential it can be to children and to kind of their development. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of the way I perceive it really. Um, uh, and again, there, I, I guess apparently Disney wanted to make um, a homosexual couple at one point. I don't know if that's still gonna be a thing or not. Um, but regardless of what the gender are, I'm just saying in general, silly speaking, since we've usually seen male and female dynamics, um, usually children gravitate towards those because those help um, nurture and provide a stable environment. And again, you can argue um, if same gender couples can or provide that same kind of outlet i'm i'm sure they do it's just it's again it's it's um it's just something that's still uh uh still debated but uh i don't want to go into that i just want to say that that's that's j just from a biological as well as psychological standpoint that's what children gravitate towards um they like the idea of two people being in love and together um, as opposed to um, as opposed to having a, a very like as, as opposed to you know um, having kinds of uh, fights or you know disputes or things like that which are all normal but um, but usually children like it when things are happy. 
um, and that's what they gravitate towards too, and that's um, a, a sense of fulfillment for them. And uh, I would even argue that maybe these films too have played a role too in some children's capacity. If they didn't have that um, that uh, family unit, you know, the the film would provide that kind of a of an outlet for them so that they could see two people together and happy and in love in that way. Um, so yeah, that that's that's all I'm gonna go with that, but I just want to emphasize that I don't think it's a bad thing to showcase romance to children. I actually think it's kind of a good thing, um, because you're showing them different kinds of emotions that they're maybe not even fully capable of really understanding, but at the same time, you know, it's a form of education, it's a form of um, opening yourself up to what uh, a lot of the times happens within life. And I think romance is sort of a part of that and is a part of that kind of family dynamic and family building block. So I don't think we should undermine it at all. So again, like I've said before, um, it plays a role in children's lives and that's why it has been so popular and why fairy tales seem to have this um, seem to, I think, gravitate towards children, in particular to, to girls, but uh, I think for, for boys as well, uh, there's certain elements that I think uh, that even boys too enjoyed about fairy tales uh, growing up. And heck, I think there were, there were tons of little boys who enjoyed Beauty and the Beast, uh, as well as tons of other fairy tales. So because I do get some stuff in there that's a little bit more action-packed. So, again, it's it's just something that I think is going to probably be a part, a large part of children's lives, and and I don't think we should try to diminish that or or, or say that's wrong. Uh, so, yeah, romance approved here. Um, and uh, also. What um, I think is another th important thing to note um, is that even though romance has been a part of the love dynamics, there's all, there's tons of other uh, forms of love that have existed throughout animation. People act like that only Disney has romance. I mean, you you people, you need to do your research, okay? <laughs> I don't even think the younger, our younger generation really understands that uh, there are and have been a variety of animated films that have addressed all different kinds of love in all of its shapes and forms. There has probably not been one that has not been really explored. Um, I mean, the, yeah, you could explore however many dynamics you want to create, but at the end of the day, it's not the kind of love you're showing, it's how you show that love. It's how you express it within the story that ultimately matters, and what is your purpose with it? Are you trying to create a fantasy, or are you trying to create a reality, uh, or are you trying to kind of balance the two out? What are your intentions with the film? So I think that's another important thing to consider uh, when it comes to this topic. And um, I think a lot of people miss this. Um, and uh, so <laughs> if, if, if you're one of these people who's complaining because there's too much romance, I think you really need to take a closer look because the, the, the other kinds of love outweigh the, the romance. And even, even then, I don't think, again, I don't think romance is a, is a bad thing at all. I think it's something that we, we should encourage and that we should showcase. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, unlike some people who just want to complain about it for whatever reason, insert X, Y, and Z. Um, so, you know, there, there are different ways in which animation has expressed love over the years, whether it be serious, goofy, um, maybe eccentric at times, uh, whether it be, you know, quarrelsome at points, um, 
Woody and Buzz, perfect example of a uh, of a of a jealousy that turns into a genuine, honest, and loving friendship at the end of the series. Um, you know, uh, films like Lion King with Simba and his dad Mufasa. Um, there's been tons. Uh, Lilo and Stitch and her sister, I believe, Nani, another perfect example of, you know, family bonding. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, love is expressed in a variety of different ways within animation. Um, and has been done and showcased in all different kinds of ways. Yes, there's definitely other avenues to explore. Yeah, we can, again... I don't think it depends a film is great just because it shows a new kind of love. Um, just because, you know, and again, this is like why I like judging films, because I don't judge them based upon what they show. I, sh I base it upon how they show it. Um, for example, like um, how apparently they were saying that they wanted to make a a uh, homosexual relationship as part of a, a Disney film. Apparently, that's that's one of the articles I saw online. Um, again, they probably maybe they changed their mind. I don't know at this point. Um, we probably have to do a little bit more research into that. But uh, again, it's a it's a new kind of love because we haven't seen this kind and uh, at least showcased in this capacity in particular to children. Um, and yeah, you can go argue about what you think about homosexuality in another video. That's not my point. My point is, 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 is that people will praise it for the sake of saying that it is new because it's showcasing a different kind of love that we haven't seen before. And yeah, we haven't seen this kind of a dynamic before, especially within a children's film. We wouldn't see it usually. Um, but just because they're showing it doesn't mean that it's good. It's how they show it that makes it good um, at the end of the day. So I think that's really what um, animators and what uh, moviegoers as well as, um, you know, the, the entertainment industry when it comes to animation needs to understand is this, this is not based upon, again, uh, what you show, it's how you show it. And again, that's why I had the huge issue with Frozen, which is explained in a video that I did a while back. Um, but I will just keep it short and brief to kind of uh, emphasize my point. Um, they claimed that it was new because it was the bond and love between two sisters. Um, even though, again, it's been done before by uh, Lilo and Stitch, uh, but apparently they, they think it's new and innovative because it's two princesses, in particular one that becomes queen, even though she doesn't really show any amount of level of responsibility whatsoever throughout the story, which clearly, again, she, she shows no capacity for leadership skills. I'm sorry, but she doesn't. Um, so... With that being said, um, <laughs> uh, the two sisters within Frozen, Elsa and Anna, um, there's not a whole lot of development between the two. And again, they, they did emphasize within the film that they wanted to make this a somewhat more realistic interpretation of a fairy tale. Um, and again, they even go ahead and and bring in the whole love and first sight controversy, which really shouldn't be a freaking controversy. It's a fairy tale. You know, it's not reality. Um, but again, they, again, they go around and they do basically the same thing that they, so quasi say that they're not doing, um, you know, they, cause they don't really develop, uh, Anna and Elsa's relationship all too well. And as a result, the love, do, you don't feel the love. You don't think it's powerful. You don't think it resonates. Um, it falls flat. At least in my opinion, it falls really flat. Um, so 
that's the important thing that animators and people across the uh, animation and our animated film slash TV industry need to understand. It's how you execute the relationship that ultimately matters at the end of the day and what you're ultimately trying to show. Are you trying to show a realistic love, uh, a more down to earth kind of, you know, um, love that you experience in real life? Or are you trying to go more emotional? Are you trying to be more about the emotional uh, feelings of love? not necessarily focused on the development or reality. Um, and clearly Frozen was wanting to claim to do one, but didn't do it all too well. And that's where I have the hugest issue with the film. Uh, and again, this is why I think it's very important. It's, it's how you show the love. It's how you show the relationship. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's really, uh, I think, ultimately all I can say when it really comes to this topic. I think it is a fascinating topic because it has been, um, it, it's just been it's such a, an important, it, it's just been, a, it just has been a, a, such an important uh, topic within animation. It's been around since pretty much the dawn of animated filmmaking and within sh even animated shorts as well. Um, I mean, again, the first film where we have Snow White, we do get a sense of, of love, not just from her romance with the prince, but also with her love and care for the dwarves. So again, there's a lot of um, animated films that have addressed love in some capacity. Um, and in some way, shape, or form. And I think it should definitely continue to be a part of the animation story. I think it should definitely be something that people uh, look to when it comes to animation. Uh, because I, I just think it's something that's so personal to, to the human, you know, condition. Uh, and and uh, I, I think it just plays such a huge and, and fundamental role in our lives. Um, that uh, that's just uh, that's just I think something that's just undeniable to me, and and I really do uh, appreciate what they what animation has showcased over the years when it comes to this topic. I think there's been a lot that's been fascinating. Again, a lot of it that's been a little bit more on the mediocre side. Frozen, my honest honest opinion, um, but still a lot that I think has held up and has been of good quality and has um, been of, uh, of, I think, uh, uh, that I think ha has made animation so unique um, compared to live action. Because live action, although love might be at the focal point or at a center point, um, there's just something in the way in which animation has executed love over the years that I think it's, it's just something that's just been so broad and just so vast. Um, whereas with a lot of live action films, I think there's a lot of other emotions going on. And there's a lot of uh, complicated scenarios involved that it does it, it takes away the sense of simplicity within life. Uh, and I think animation brings that sort of simplicity and, and that sort of... Um, belief in higher values and things like that so yeah i think that's uh that's just how i how i see it at least um but i'm totally open to what anybody has to say in regards to this topic but uh ultimately i think that's really all i can say but again if there are any questions comments concerns be more than happy to answer them thank you so much for watching hope you all have a pleasant day week month and year and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.